Hi, I'm Colleen. I'm from Google. I've been with Google for one year and one day, exactly. Yesterday was my anniversary. Um, and I work on a team that does open source integrations with uh, Google Cloud Platform. So today we're going to talk about uh, integrating machine learning and Stackdriver with Cloud Foundry. I'm Mikey Bolt. I work at Pivotal, and I work with ISV partners to integrate their services into Pivotal Cloud Foundry. <laughs> I'm done. All right. Um, so we'll start with the big picture here. So uh, I'll work right to left. Uh, we have Google Cloud Platform, which has all these great services. Uh, we'll highlight the um, cloud storage, the machine learning vision API, and the stack driver debugger to do live production debugging today. There are also several other services. These are all exposed through uh, the Google Cloud Platform service broker. So you can use standard Cloud Foundry service bindings to use these services directly from your applications. Um, so we have great services, and you're going to make some great apps, and we're going to have a lot of happy users. So I'm going to start with uh, kind of walking through some of the other uh, machine learning APIs that are available. So the Translate API, probably a lot of you are familiar with, uh, that takes either plain text or HTML documents uh, and translates them to a variety of different languages. So a possible use case for that would be just translating your own website. Um, so just uploading your HTML pages, uh, run them through the API, and out pops a globally accessible website. The Natural Language API does entity detection as well as sentiment analysis. Um, so something you could use this for at, at your own company would be to process customer reviews, pick out ones that are especially positive, and try to highlight those phrases uh, in your next marketing campaign. Speech API takes an audio file um, and translates it to plain text. It can also recognize uh, what language the user is speaking in. So a cool application for this might be, uh, say you have a phone system that uh, you route to for customer support, and you maybe detect that your user is really struggling to use the system. Maybe the reason is they are trying to speak a language that uh, your system is not in. So you take a little audio sample, run it through the API, and try to route them to an agent that can assist them in their native tongue. Our newest API is the Video Intelligence API. Um, we'll show you a, a little demo of that in a bit, um, but that takes a video file and analyzes it for content. Um, so if you are taking a video of your kid's Little League game or something, it'll tell you which sections uh, are actually part of the game and which sections you uh, turn to record your wife's uh, reaction to that home run. Um, a potential business use case could be um, holding a competition for your users, uh, you can let them upload videos interacting with your product and run that through the API to pick out where in this video are they actually showcasing the product, uh, collect those snippets, and, and then use them later. And the Vision API is the one uh, that is integrated into our application today. Um, so the Vision API has a bunch of cool functionality, including uh, text OCR and um, palette recognition, um, detection of whether uh, an image is likely to contain adult content or violence. Um, one cool thing you can maybe do if you were a retailer, uh, like a furniture retailer, upload uh, pictures, your customers, of products that they already have, and you could use the palette detection to try to find similar pieces that you had to suggest back to them. So obviously, each of these APIs are really cool on their own, but <laughs> combinations are kind of where the true power shines through. Um, so for example, running an image through the Vision API to get the text out, and then running the text through the Translate API, I'm pretty sure is how the Google Translate app works. <laughs> um, or maybe you could run customer voicemails 
through the speech API and then through the natural language API to kind of gather a general sentiment on is this customer happy and we can just record their, their kudos or does this guy need a call back from somebody who's very patient and willing to help him out? Um, another idea I thought was pretty cool is if you could troll Twitter for uh, tweets that are related to your product and then run the natural language API on the, tweet, the text of the tweet, get uh, sentiment analysis, and then run the image through the vision API to make sure that it's safe for work. It's an easy way to come up with things that are marketable and positive towards your company you can use in your next marketing campaign. Um, as a kind of added bonus, we're gonna uh, showcase the Stackdriver debugger in this talk. So Stackdriver does uh, logging metrics, debugging, and trace. The logging and metrics functionality are available uh, to Cloud Foundry through the nozzle. Um, that's open source right now um, and also available on PivNet if you're a Pivotal Cloud Foundry user. Um, today we're going to be showcasing the debug functionality that is built into the Java build pack. And kind of touched on this already, but uh, these services are all integrated through the service broker um, as well as a bunch of others. and. Uh, I'll just plug right now if some of these other services interest you. In particular, I think BigQuery and Spanner um, are gonna be talked about in this room uh, in the next couple hours. So just stick around after this talk and get all of the Google data service knowledge you need. All right, so here's a picture of the application that we're going to demo now. Uh, what it does is it goes and scrapes the subreddit awe, which has pictures of cute puppies and kitties and hamsters and sweaters and stuff like that. Um, it pulls them down off of Reddit, sticks them in Google Cloud Storage, and runs the machine learning vision API on them. Uh, it, it saves the top tag or the top label that the vision API returns and presents that to the user along with the picture. Um, as Colleen mentioned, we'll also have uh, uh, stack driver demo in there to show live production debugging on this application. So if we look now, um, we have no smoke and mirrors here. We had no nothing in our uh, uh, in our storage bucket yet. Lost connection. <laughs> I was supposed to already be SSH'd into this VM, and I forgot about it until just now. I like to throw Mikey some curveballs, just yeah. keep him on his toes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we are. So we have the application up um, already pushed to Cloud Foundry. Um, there are no services bound to it at this point, unless calling through another curveball. <laughs> nope. All right. So we're going to go ahead and create a, uh, an instance of the Google Cloud Storage service. And so this is just you know standard Cloud Foundry CF create service, and we pass in the bucket name. Hmm? Can oh, can you zoom, zoom text a little more? Is that good? More? <laughs> I assume that noise means it's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, when we create the service, we pass in the bucket name that it will create. And then we bind that service to our application using the standard CF bind service. And along with the bind service, we uh, include a, a role so that we can both create and uh, read the images out of the bucket. All right. Uh, we'll also create an instance of the stack driver debugger and attach that to the app in the, the same way. And the stack driver, the need to name it. Ah, yeah. This is a live demo. Uh, the stack driver uh, is integrated through the the Java build pack, and I hear that support will soon be coming for Python and um, yeah. Go, Golang. So you'll be able to 
do all the stack driver goodness on more applications. So I'll restage the application to run it back through the uh, run it back through the Java build pack with the stack driver information uh, that service bound. So in the meantime, we wanted to show you the video intelligence API. Um, so this video you can actually try out for yourself. Go to cloud.google.com slash video dash intelligence. Uh, this is the animals video in keeping with our theme. Um, so this video, it's a minute and 38 seconds long and it took about 15 seconds to process. We got out all of these labels and the cool thing is here, these shot labels. So you'll see these change as the shots change, identifying exactly what is in the shot. And then if you come to the API, you'll get this same information with these uh, time offsets, um, and the, as well as the confidence interval about what exactly is in the shot. So pretty cool stuff. I bet we're restaged by now. Almost. <laughs> this one takes a few seconds to start up because it needs to run through the Java build pack. Cool. All right. So now we'll go to the live application. We'll see that uh, there is there are no images there yet. Again, no smoke and mirrors here. Um, we'll add in Stackdriver now, we'll add, um, pull in the code from GitHub. We can see that the creating the service instance in Cloud Foundry lets us get to our application here in Stackdriver. Uh, we can import the source code for the application directly from GitHub. Uh, this is an open source uh, example that comes along with the GCP service broker. Uh, which is an open source repository. So this is an example in there if you want to look at the code for yourself. We'll put a breakpoint in uh, inside the endpoint that goes out to Reddit to do the image scraping. And that's it. Very simple, a few easy steps. You get to see your source code, set your breakpoint wherever you like it. All right, so now we'll hit that uh, endpoint to go do the scrape from Reddit. And we can see that the information pops right in here. Uh, we can browse the local variables uh, from, from that breakpoint. So we can dig down here and see images that are coming out of the, the Reddit scrape. Uh, we also get a stack trace. So you can see where your code was exactly right in your live production system. And another cool feature is these snapshots are actually shareable. So I can just copy this URL and paste it in another window or send it to another developer who understands the code better than I do. Um, and they're going to get this same snapshot with the same local variables and uh, stack trace available to them. All right. So then we'll come back to the application and go to the main page again where there is nothing there before, and now we see that we have all the, all the puppies and seals and whatever else is on Reddit right now, with the labels from the, the Vision API as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, storage bucket so we can see the, the images in there, and we'll pull one down to show the, some more details that the Vision API uh, pulls out of there. So you can try this for yourself as well. It's available on the GCP website. You can just drag your image right in there. All right, so it runs a Vision API. We see the other labels. The top one was, was dog, and uh, it has several other labels there that it came up with for that image. Um, it can do a reverse image search, so you can see where else on the web this image is uh, being used. ones happen to all be Google searches. Um, but we have gotten, we got a result this morning like from Pinterest or Twitter. Um, so just so that you know it's not restricted to Google searches. <laughs> we 
get the uh, color palette that came out of the image. We get the uh, safe safeness for work and you know violence and things like that, so you can make sure that it's an appropriate image. And then all this information is also available um, through the API in this JSON format that we see here. And so when I was playing around with this, um, remember I said that the Vision API can do uh, text recognition as well. So I actually thought it'd be fun to run this particular image uh, through the API just to just to be sure. Um, so that's this guy. And indeed it does pick up the text, sun and sailboat. Um, it creates a uh, guess at a document layout for you. So it's identifying that these words are in distinct paragraphs as well as the, the same uh, information that you were getting before. Um, yeah, and so as Mikey mentioned, this code is publicly available through uh, the GCP service broker repo. Um, so feel free to download it and play around with it yourself. And then I think other than that, it's kind of all we had to show you. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask us now or after the fact. And also I'll do one more plug. If uh, you found this at all interesting and all of your friends went to the Kubo talk that's at the same time. <laughs> We're doing this demo again tomorrow in the demo theater in the foundry at uh, 1.40, I think. Something like that. Something like that. Cool. Thank you. Any questions? Stack driver. Oh, stack driver. Yeah. The question was, can you? Uh, the question <laughs> is, could you? Uh, is it possible to add a non-public uh, repository to the stack driver code import? Uh, yes. <laughs> so local files, um, and then um, if you, yeah, any any other services that you use. Um, but so probably for you, for on-prem, um, either the source code capture or local files is going to be the easiest way. Can IAM roles lock down this specific piece such that the only project role access gives you this access? Do you have granting of permissions where you get the only rights plus the bug rights using stack driver? Um, so the question was, uh, is there an IAM role that could get you project view only rights uh, along with stack driver view rights? Um, and the answer is, I believe so. <laughs> um, so the uh, stack driver debugger does have a, what's called a custom role. Um, I didn't show assigning that here because it's defaulted in the service broker. Um, but just uh, so giving a user that custom role as well as just a project viewer should be uh, sufficient for that. Yeah. Are there any other questions now? So, so it, it uh, the requests still go through as we saw. Um, it doesn't actually stop like a debugger breakpoint would, but it just captures all that information and and pulls it into stack driver. Um so sorry, the is your question also about stack driver or is it about the Yeah. Yeah, so that, that was uh, the same as the first question. Um, if you're using on-prem, um, you can select your source through local files or through this uh, source code capture. If, if your application is not running on Google Cloud Platform, can you still use Stackdriver? Um, oh, if your application's not running. Um, 
Yeah, I believe so. Uh, you just need the the project create. You need a project created in Google Cloud, but um, again, because this uh, the st the stack driver integration is built into the build pack and the service broker, both of which are cloud ag agnostic, um, you should be totally fine on any any service provider. Performance impacts. That's a fantastic question that honestly I don't know the answer to. Um, it's streaming data, basically. Um, so I want to say that it shouldn't be <laughs> too big of an impact. Um, but Ben, uh, do you have an answer? <laughs> Anybody else? Awesome. Well, thank you for coming. Um, like I said, stick around if you're interested in any of the other Google data services, and we'll be here to talk to you. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.